Young Young has captured gold. Udell Johnson silver, Boris Georgiev and Iana Georgi of Romania each with the bronze. So the light welterweight gold has been handed out. Now we get set for the middleweight gold medal bout between Golovkin, the reigning world champion, and Gider Bekoff, the silver medalist from the Sydney Olympic Games. Who could forget 1952, middleweight gold. He was only 17 years of age at the time, but American middleweight Floyd Patterson knocks out Romania's Vasily Tita 74 seconds into the first round to win gold at Helsinki. Floyd Patterson would go on to be a great heavyweight champion at the age of 21 in 1956, heavyweight champion of the world, but an Olympic gold medal. Went on, as you said, to become the youngest at that time before Tyson broke his mark, the youngest heavyweight champion and the first heavyweight champion to lose his title and then regain it. And he was the youngest gold medalist. They changed the rules. In 1924, Jackie Fields had captured gold. He was only 16. Floyd Patterson at 17 now stands as the youngest Olympic gold medalist at 17 years and seven months of age. Although there's two boxers that'll box on Sunday that have a chance, although we'll not be able to break Patterson's record, but we have two 17-year-olds going on Sunday with a chance for gold as well. But we're ready for the middleweight gold medal bout between Gennady Golovkin and Gardebeck Gaidar Bekoff as they both make their way into the field of play for this middleweight gold. Gennady Golovkin, 22 years of age, from Kazakhstan, the reigning world champion. Golovkin with an opportunity for gold. And if there's a boxer in this competition with a chip on his shoulder, it is this man, the Russian, Gaderbek Gaderbekov, 27 years of age, back at the Sydney Olympics, Teddy. He fought for gold against Jorge Gutierrez of Cuba. He had the lead in this bout, but he was not able to hold on and wound up losing a very close decision, 17 to 15. And came so close to gold, then he fell out of favor with the Russian Federation, was not on the world scene. They were trying to punish him because they didn't like his training habits. They didn't think he worked hard enough. Shows up at the European Championships and he wins gold, and now here he is battling for Olympic gold against Gennady Golovkin. Some of these athletes from these other countries, some of these harsher countries, they have less options than some of the athletes from other countries. They have to do well. Otherwise, there are pretty strong circumstances quite often. You know, the Russian Federation taught Gaderbekov his lesson because when he was finally reinstated on the national scene, he blitzed through the European Championships earlier this year to win gold. Can Gaidar Bekov take it one step further than he did in Sydney? Can he capture the gold in the middleweight division? He's got four rounds to help tell that tale. Tabo Victor Mahapi from Lesotho, our referee. Well, Gaidar Bekov will have to do it, as you said, with the 2003 gold medalist from the World Championships, Golovkin. Both Soviet Russia has not won a middleweight Olympic gold medal. Both fight is similar, but right away you see one difference. Gaida Bekov has the height advantage. Will he use it? That will have a lot to do with what color medal he's wearing at the end of this bout. Right now, Gaida Bekov would like to set up on the outside, use that height, and have a theme in his head. Charge Golovkin a price for the real estate he's trying to make up to get inside with the taller guy to back off. And you know what that price is, Bob? It's not cash. It's punches. Guy to back off would like to charge Golovkin two or three punches for every foot he tries to gain. Golovkin in the red, Gaderbekov in the blue. I've noticed in the past, Gaderbekov, his stand at the right range, like he's going to use his height, but he doesn't move his hands to really take advantage of his height. He doesn't make the shorter man pay a price when he forces him to reach in. Now, Golovkin, the shorter man, 
when he gets inside, he just threw a little bit of a forearm or an elbow in the face of Guy to back off, but Golovkin not taking advantage of his assets. We talked about Guy to back off not using his height, letting Golovkin get in. Well, Golovkin, the shorter man, not taking advantage of his shorter arms when he gets inside. He's smothering himself. You don't want to work inside with a taller man and then put your hands behind him and not be able to work. These two boxers started as teammates as part of the old Soviet Union. In 1992 in Barcelona, they competed under the unified team. In 1996, under their own respective flags. Gatterbeck got her back off of Russia. Down 6-2 to two at the end of the first round. Nettie Golovkin of Kazakhstan, the Asian qualifying tournament. That's how he advanced. Of course, the reigning world champion. Kazakhstan has never won a middleweight medal, obviously, since 1996. Get a look at the breakdown from the Sydney Olympic Games. Jorge Gutierrez, the gold medal winner in this weight class. Cuba's representative in this weight class, Jordanis to Spain, was beaten in the quarterfinals by Andre Durell of the United States, who then lost to Golovkin in the semifinals. Now number two, Golovkin in the red with the edge. Both these fighters do not properly exploit their strengths. Golov Golovkin, the shorter man, Look, he works inside, but then he allows himself to get tied up. You're the shorter man. The taller man's at a disadvantage inside. He can't use those long arms. You're inside. You want to work. You don't want to smother yourself. Golovkin doesn't do a good job when he gets inside of taking advantage of his asset, having shorter arms, maybe physically being stronger. And again, I said both fighters do not take advantage of the things they should. Gaida Bekov, guilty of the same. On the outside, stands at the right place to be the taller man, but doesn't make Golovkin pay when he comes in. Again, Gaida Bekov gives up his height, Bob. If you're gonna be tall, you gotta set your feet and stay out there. Watch the feet of Gaida Bekov, and that will tell you whether or not he's fighting tall. If they move in, he's not fighting tall. If he's in close to Golovkin, Golovkin is getting his way. Golovkin, a little movement there. Got a back off, gets in a left to pull within one. Once again, Guy to back off. He stands off at the right place. He's got to move those hands as the shorter Golovkin gets forced to try to reach in and close the gap with the taller man. Golovkin told to keep his head up. For the most part, if you just come in late on this fight, all you got to know is if you see them in close, it's got to be favoring the man in red, Golovkin. The short